lots of these are going to be picked uh, again off a whim off of just feeling some of them i know a little bit about some teams some players individuals here and there but most of the time it's just going to be for fun so don't take these too seriously if i like discredit your favorite team or a matchup that you know 100 percent who's going to win um i definitely don't know so definitely keep that in mind this is just for fun entertainment uh, relaxation but also i wanted to say um definitely over the past couple of maybe uploads weeks even um i really haven't really seen a whole lot of what can you say sort of like um contribution uh to the channel to a whole lot of people um i did just have my you know 10,000 subscriber video and even that video i feel like there wasn't a whole lot of you know i can just like coming together i guess you could say for that video which is kind of upsetting but also you know i understand like it's just you know another video on my channel but you know since this is the sort of first big upload on my channel since then i thought i'd make it a more special one so i'm actually gonna be doing a jake baller asmr uh march madness bracket challenge giveaway whatever you want to call it i'll write now down in the comments if you obviously like the video and are subscribed to the channel first of all go down in the comments and comment down below your winner to the ncaa march madness tournament and if you pick the right winner um you win <laughs> yeah it's going to be doing a, a cash giveaway kind of like what i did many months ago when i did my other giveaway i'm going to be doing a cash giveaway to whoever can pick the winner obviously that does mean if a jumble of people uh pick the same from the group of people who picked the correct winner so maybe think a little bit strategically and maybe think of a little bit of an outside pick because maybe it's not always you know the best team that always everyone already can guess maybe pick a little bit of a random one and maybe you get it right and maybe you have a better chance of, of winning so again uh just comment down below your winner obviously you know if it's if, if, if your comment is posted you know a couple days before the championship game it's not going to count so the oldest comments will obviously be favored a lot heavier so make sure you get your comments in now and uh, yeah like the video you have to be subscribed to the channel as well and comment down below your winner to be entered into the giveaway and yeah i think that is everything so let's get started also i'm, I'm going to be going through this very quickly because there's a lot of matchups to talk about so again not a lot of in-depth look if you want an in-depth look go check out the ncaa march madness app they have a bunch of in-depth looks for a bunch of different teams these are just my picks and i'm just gonna be throwing them at you fairly quickly so uh let's get started all right so obviously the march madness bracket is breaking bro broken up into uh four different uh, uh sections uh regions i guess you could call them uh the west the east the south and the midwest i think that's what those are um starting off with the western part of the bracket first we have the number one ranked team probably and i think they are the ranked number one ranked team in the entire nation we have gonzaga uh going up against the number 16 scene georgia state which i don't understand how georgia is in the western bracket i have no idea how the bracket is even made it's kind of random i feel like but anyways uh gonzaga georgia state gotta go with gonzaga gonzaga chet holmgren super high iq basketball whenever you think about gonzaga high iq players for sure so that's going to be a pretty tough team to go up against for sure especially with chip holmgren probably the number one overall pick in this upcoming uh, year's draft super talented really excited to see what he can do but yeah going with gonzaga on that one we have a toss-up game of a 8-9 matchup of boise versus idaho i mean boise versus idaho <laughs> boise versus memphis um a toss-up game if you actually look up here uh, the 8-9 matchup is the closest matchup uh, of all time in NCAA March Madness history. Basically, literally 50-50 of a chance of winning and losing. Again, a toss-up. Um, I'm going to go with Memphis. I know they have Jalen. I think his name's Jalen Duran. I know his last name's Duran. Big-time center, also draft pick. That's going to be pretty, pretty solid, I would assume. You can also look at their stats side-by-side -side on this app, which is really nice. And... They have a better free throw percentage. They have a better three point percentage. They are a more fast paced team with more fast break points. I like that. They'll have a little bit more up and down in them. I'm going to go with Memphis on that one, even though it is a toss up game. Then we have the very, very, very interesting 5 12 matchup, which the 5 12 matchup for some reason 
is a very close matchup every single year in the NCAA March Madness Tournament. We have UConn and New Mexico State. New Mexico State is always a very solid March Madness team. For some reason, they always pick up their, their, their pace of play and everything during March Madness. UConn, though, definitely having some sort of home court advantage going up and playing in New York. I feel like that will favor them a little bit more. Plus, they're just a really good shooting team. I'm going to go with UConn winning out there. Even though that will be a matchup that I would definitely watch very closely. That could be a very flip-floppy one, I feel. Uh, then we have Arkansas and Vermont, which is a def another very definite, uh, interesting matchup. Because Vermont here is an incredible shooting team. 30, shooting 37% from three, 50% from the field, 74% from the line. Definitely this can be a matchup where if they get hot, they can they can definitely pull off the upset here, at least in my own opinion. I would rather trust a more fast of a pace team, but be more a little bit of a defensive team than a team that, you know, has a chance to win if they do get hot. I'd, I'd rather take my chances on a fast pace inside scoring defensive team than, you know, a chance on a whim that these kids can really get off to a good shooting stroke. I'm going to go with Arkansas winning this one, but... Again, look out for the upset on this one. Then we have Alabama facing the winner of Rutgers and Notre Dame, which probably will be a very good first, uh, the first four matchup, I think is what it's called. Interesting. Um, I keep hearing about Rutgers winning against Notre Dame and then also winning against Ar uh, sorry, Alabama, because Alabama isn't really the sort of big-time college basketball school all that much anymore. But, man, ooh. I'm going to go safe and pick Alabama. Again, I keep saying this, watch out for the upset. This can also be an upset. Usually always one of those first four teams are very hot and fiery. Obviously just coming off and playing already. Already getting that rust off of them. This can also be kind of an upset one. But um, then we have TTU going up against Montana State. Picking TTU. Uh, Montana State, if you look at their stats, pretty good shooting team. 37% from the three-point line, 40% from the field, 75% from the free throw line, which free throws highly underrated stat line in NCAA basketball when games are close usually a, a vast majority of the games are very close free throws super important watch out for those free throw percentages teams if this game's close watch out for them but I don't think it's going to get that close so they're not going to have a chance to show that I'm, I'm thinking TTU then we have another very interesting matchup of Michigan State going up against Davidson uh, Michigan State not really being again that big time team that they used to be um, definitely going to be struggling I feel like in this March Madness tournament Davidson um, man um, definitely a shooting team shooting 39% from three uh, 49% from the field 75% from the free throw line if there would be a team that I would bet money on on winning a, a matchup it would be this one Michigan State just really isn't that sort of same team even though Tom Izzo is an amazing college basketball coach I just don't feel like they're going to get done here. I'm picking the upset of a 7-10 matchup. Davidson beating Michigan State. I feel like they might just shoot the lights out on this one. They're going to come out really hot and fiery. I'm going to pick the upset of Davidson. Did a quick one. Duke, Cal, for, uh, Cal Fullerton um, picking Duke. Uh, Paolo Banquero is just an insane young player. This whole team is full of young, insane young talent, which is scary because the deeper they get into this March Madness tournament, the more locked in teams are going to be. We obviously saw in their last game, that Coach K game against North Carolina, when teams are locked in on them, it's very tough for them to be able to score or do anything. So I'm going to give it to this one for now, but definitely watch out for Duke because ooh, they're a young team that might just be caught off guard one of these games. I don't think it's this one, but I, I, I wouldn't trust them all that much. Then moving down to the other side of the bracket, on the east side of the bracket, we have Baylor going against Norfolk. Picking Baylor. Baylor, one of the weaker number one seeded teams, but still a great team. Obviously going to get that and get the job done here. I don't think it's going to be a 116 upset here. Then we have, again, a toss-up game. UNC, Marquette. I'm going to pick UNC just based on the fact of how they played against Duke. If they can play that style of gritty basketball, hopefully the entirety that they're in the March Madness tournament, they have a chance of upsetting anyone. Obviously Duke being a very high-talented team. If they can lock down against any one of these other teams in the March Madness tournament, they actually have a chance of doing something pretty crazy here. So I'm going to pick UNC just based on the fact that I've seen them lock in when time comes to the push comes to shove, or whatever you want to say. Then we have St. 
Kate Mary going up against the winner of Wyoming, and I think it was, who else is it? Indiana, yeah, Indiana. Um, I've heard a lot about this game uh, on, like, the, the big-time people talking about this game, and I'm going to go at St. Mary. I don't think there's going to be an upset here, but again, obviously a 5-12. There's usually always one or two 5-12 upsets, and I'm always scared to pick them, and I don't know which one it's going to be. I would have more faith of uh, the New Mexico State UConn one in this than, than this one. I'm going to pick St. Mary. I feel like I have a little more trust in them. Uh, we have UCLA going against Akron. Picking USC, uh, UCLA saw them play up against Arizona in their Pac-12 tournament championship game. And Arizona being probably the or one of the best teams in college basketball right now. They, they, they were pretty much beating them down for a vast majority of the game. Ended up losing that game though. But if they can, kind of with UNC, can lock in during big time games like that, they can upset a lot of teams as well. So I'm, 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 I'm not saying this is an upset or anything, but I'm picking UCLA. So then we have a game here of Texas going up against Virginia Tech, and oh, I think this is another toss-up game, six against an 11, usually not that much of a toss-up, but um, this is more of a offense versus defense style of game, Virginia Tech shooting nearly 40% from three, and then Texas being a highly defensive team, oh man, um, you know what? I need to pick more upsets. I'm going to go with the Virginia Tech upset. I'm going to say the defense of Texas doesn't show up, even though it usually does. And them shooting 39% from three, I think it's going to bite Texas in the butt. They're going to come out fiery. I'm picking Virginia Tech for the 11-6 to upset. Then we have Purdue and Yale. Purdue, one of those teams that have one of the star players in the NCAA tournament in Jaden Ivey. This guy looks like he can be a guy who can't hate come out, average 25 points the entirety of the NCAA March Madness tournament, and it's probably good to know what it's going to need to do in order for them to get anywhere. Uh, I'm picking Purdue to win that one, even though Yale, obviously, high IQ players, very fiery team, especially uh, coming off shooting performances, but picking Purdue to win that one. We have Murray State going up against uh, San Francisco, which never thought I'd say probably either of those teams in the March Madness tournament this year. That's pretty interesting that they're going against each other. This one could be a toss-up game. I'm going to go with Murray State. Their stats just look a lot better. And just from what I've been hearing about Murray State, even though they don't have John Morant on their team, I still feel like they're very capable, at least from what I've heard. I've never seen any games from them, but go off, uh, I guess, trusting other people's opinions on that one. And then we have Kentucky going against St. Peter's. Obviously going to pick Kentucky there. Uh, coach Calipari, an amazing coach, always knows to, to get his guys locked in at the right moment in time. Picking, picking Kentucky to come out of there. On to the south division of the bracket now. We have Arizona again, one of the best teams in NCAA basketball right now. Picking the winner against Wright and Bryant University. Pretty random. Picking him as to win that one. Don't think there are going to be probably any uh, upsets in the first sort of 1v16 matchups, but then again, I guess you never know. Then we have another toss-up game of an 8-9, Seton Hall versus TCU. I'm going to go with Seton Hall. Their stat line just looks a little bit nicer. They're definitely a way better um, three-point shooting team, free throw shooting team than TCU. So even if it does get down to a close game, Seton Hall's stat line is just, it's just more favored towards them when shooting the ball. And I feel like I'm just going to favor that a little bit more heavily. I'm picking Seton Hall. Then here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the 5-12 matchup of Houston going up against the Blazers. And even though they're not the Blazers, and I'm not picking them because they are the Blazers, I'm picking the 5-12 it. I'm picking the 12, beating the 5 of the Blazers, solely because, if you look at this team, heavily better free throw shooting team, better three point shooting team, they even have a more fast break point opportunities when it comes to this team as well. I feel like, again, a team that can come out fiery, hot shooting, they will be ready for this 5-12 upset. I'm picking them to go up against Houston. Houston is still a solid team. Can they win? Obviously, yes. But I'm going to be picking the upset here. I feel like this team just has a little bit more pep in their step into this game. I'm picking the 5-12 the upset here of the Blazers beating the University of Houston. Then this is also a very close matchup of the 4-13 matchup of Illinois in Chattanooga. Again, when listening to a lot of the sort of experts on this stuff, Chattanooga is actually kind of maybe even favored to win this matchup. Um... Since I did already just pick a 5-12 upset, I'm not going to pick the upset in this one in Chattanooga. I'm picking Illinois just because. But this one's also very scary. Even if you look at their stat line side by side, 
is a, a 4-13 matchup. The stat line are almost very similar. So again, this could quite honestly be a very close toss-up game. I'm going to pick maybe the, the maturity of Illinois, maybe just a little bit more of a, of a pedigree in them, maybe to come out with a victory. Then we have Colorado State being a number six seed in the NCAA March Madness Tournament, which in my opinion is pretty wild to think about that, going up against Michigan, which again, Michigan is just, there is not the same basketball program as they have been in quite some time. Hopefully that can change at some point, but I don't think it's going to change here. Uh, I, I, have, I, have, I keep hearing that they sort of tumbled, 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 tumbled their way into the March Madness Tournament, so I don't really understand how they're so, you know, I don't know, in the March Madness Tournament without having to do like a plane or something like that, but since they did sort of tumble the way into the season, tumbling their way out of the season, I'm picking Colorado State to maybe come out with some sort of uh, upset here, beating Michigan. Then we have Tennessee going up against a team called Elwood. I have no idea what university they are. All it says here is Elwood. <laughs> so maybe just based off of name alone, but also talent. I'm picking Tennessee. Tennessee is, I think at one point in time, was even the number one ranked team in the entire nation. Um, very solid team. Very good all around, I would say. Playing inside, outside. Picking Tennessee to come up with that one. Then we have Ohio State going up against the March Madness team itself. The team that always comes out for March Madness. Loyola Chicago. You know what? You, you, you gotta pick Loyola Chicago to win a March Madness game. You literally have to. Ohio State also very binged up on their big time names. Not really the same team as sort of in, in the regular season of, of, of their NCAA run. They're just not there right now. And I think Loyola Chicago, Chicago is there right now. They're always ready for a game. I'm picking them for the upset there. Then we have uh, sorry, Villanova going up, up against Delaware. Villanova, always a great March Madness team. They always got a big Villanova there. Last part of the bracket here, we have Kansas going up against the winner of Texas and then A&M CC. No idea out of those teams. They're in the first four games though. Picking Kansas to win this one. Now again, Kansas, Baylor, probably the weaker of the number one seeds. If I were to pick an upset, it would be one of those guys, but I don't think it's going to happen this year. But then again, you never know. But I'm picking Kansas still come out on that one. Kansas is also one of my favorite college basketball teams. Um, another toss-up, San Diego State going up against Creighton. I'm going to pick San Diego State. Always a great program when it comes to really uh, sort of solidifying defense and pressure every single time. They always come out on top on that. I'm picking up San Diego State. Also, their stat line, pretty similar, but they're a slightly better shooting team, shooting um, 35% from the three-point line and also just defensively look a little bit more there. Then another very fiery team in Iowa going up against Richmond in a 5-12 matchup. Again, Iowa, very solid team. They have one of the best players in the country also in Keegan Murray, who's probably going to be leading them throughout this entire NCAA March Madness run. But that's the thing. If he doesn't have a good game here in Richmond, figures out a way to sort of cancel out Keegan Murray, but also has a very fiery shooting streak, which they, they definitely had a very good game against Davidson actually beating them in their own conference tournament. They have a chance of a 5-12 upset here, but I'm going to pick Iowa. Iowa is still a very fiery team, also winning out their own NCAA uh, tournament championship that just went down. It's very tough, but I'm picking Iowa to win this one. 5-12 matchup, though, very close. Then we have Providence going up against South Dakota State. I'm picking Providence, South Dakota State. No idea what could even happen there. That's a very, just me picking a, a better team, I guess you could say. Um, another sort of uh, sort of toss up, we have LSU going up against, uh, I think it's Iowa State. I think it's who it is, Iowa State. I'm gonna pick LSU here, just solely based off of the fact that their stats are just better. That's just what I've seen. Maybe there is some sort of upset there. That's one of the, that's, that's one of the like random mad ups that I literally have no idea about any team, any players. I'm just picking them just because, I don't know. Uh, we have Wisconsin going up against Colgate, which again, Colgate is one of those teams that if it can off to a fiery start, watch out for them because they shoot on average 40% from three, which is insane, nearly 50% from the field as well. Very efficient team. But I'm going to go on the defensive end here. I'm going to trust Col uh, sorry, Wisconsin's defense here a little bit just better team always going up against a very tough uh, competition in their own conference. Colgate, not so much. Maybe their stats are a little bit skewed that way. I'm going to trust Wisconsin here, but again, the shooting stroke of Colgate might be able to win in this game. I'm just going to trust Wisconsin a little bit more, but that's definitely a matchup that you, you could pick an upset there for sure, and I wouldn't bat an eye on it. Then we have USC going up against Miami. Uh, again, when games are close, 
check at their free throw line stats. Miami shooting 75% from the free throw line. Uh, USC barely 65%, almost a 10 point difference. I'm picking Miami if this does come down to a close game. And then we have the University of Auburn with, again, maybe the number one overall pick in Jabari Smith Jr. going up against, against Jackson State, I think it is. Even if it is, I don't know. I don't care. I'm picking Auburn, also a team that was probably number one ranked at uh, multiple points different times throughout the NCAA year. They have probably one of the best players in the country in Jabari Smith Jr. I'm picking them to move on. Alrighty, now we're into the second round. Again, I'm going to be speedrunning through these, so sorry if I'm already speedrunning. I'm going to be extra speedrunning now because this video is probably already too long. So, Gonzaga, Memphis, again, they have Duran, Duran versus Chet Holmgren. If Duran can cancel at Holmgren and the rest of Memphis can really lock it down on the other players, this could be an upset that Gonzaga sees that might catch them a little bit off guard. But I'm going to say they have it in the bag. I'm picking Gonzaga to beat Memphis, even though it could be an upset. Watch out for that 1-8, I'm sorry, 1-9 upset. But I'm, 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 I'm trusting Chet Holmgren. I'm trusting the high IQ of Gonzaga. I'm picking to win that one. Then we have another very tough matchup of UConn going up against Arkansas. <sighs> they are all very close in a lot of different things. UConn, though, does have a better offensive efficiency team as well. Uh, they both pretty much rebound the ball, shoot the ball, do everything the exact same. I'm just going to go with a somewhat upset here. I'm picking the five over the four. I'm picking UConn to win, even though they could even lose in the first round, which might be so stupid. It might be a bracket buster for me. But I'm, I'm picking UConn to win that one. We have Alabama going against TTU. Going to be picking TTU there. TTU is always known for being a great defensive team, always a high hustle team. I'm picking them to move on. Then we have Davidson and Duke, which again, I was just talking about Duke. Pretty much a bunch of team of freshmen and sophomore players. If there would be a team, a high seed team, a one or a two, that would be out early. It would be Duke. And Davidson is always a great team, very high IQ players. They could shoot the lights out against Duke. Duke sort of crumbles and lets it slip away from them. I'm going to pick Duke for now. But again, Duke isn't sort of uh, very much in, in favor in my bracket. I could say I could really see them going out kind of early. We have Baylor going against UNC. Again, just talking about Duke. UNC, how they played against Duke. If they can play that sort of high energy against Baylor, I can see an upset here. I, I could really, 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 really see an upset here. I almost really want to pick the upset here. But I'll pick Baylor for now. But man, this is a team that if you are making a second bracket i would pick a unc or even a marquette upset against baylor ah, i almost want to but I, i'm not gonna say it then we have st mary going against ucla ucla again i watched them play against arizona playing very well i'm gonna pick uh, ucla for now st mary though a good shooting team if they can somehow come out fiery can blow ucla out of the water could definitely see that happening then we have virginia tech going up against purdue I'm going to pick Jaden Ivey in the Purdue squad, really sort of pick up their pace of play, knowing they have a pretty good shot, even though coming out of this division, because Baylor isn't the best number one seeded team. I think they have a shot here of coming out of this entire bracket of the East. They're, maybe, uh, they're moving on. Then we have Murray State against UK. Kentucky, Blue Bud School, I think it's going to blow Murray State out of the water here. I'm picking Kentucky. Then we have Arizona going against Seton Hall. And Arizona is known throughout history to really uh, give up pace of play, really sort of uh, turn it from a one seed into an eight seed very quickly. There's sometimes a team that can play very high efficient basketball, but also just look like they can lose to any team in the NCAA tournament. Again, look out for an upset here. Uh, 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 Seton Hall, definitely not a scrub team whatsoever. Could be very scary, but Arizona playing one of the best basketball of their entire NCAA run right now. I'm picking them to move on. Then again, we have the Blazers going up against Illinois, and I almost really want to pick the Blazers again because their shooting numbers are just so off the charts, but I'm going to pick Illinois just because I feel like it's very tough to see a, 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 a number 12 going into the Sweet 16. It sometimes just always happens, and you usually have to always uh, predict something like that happening. It's probably going to happen, but I'm not going to pick it because I don't want to look dumb. <laughs> I'm going to pick Illinois coming out on that one. Then we have Colorado State going against Tennessee. Again, like I was talking about, Tennessee was number one ranked for many different times throughout its NCAA run, and I feel like this gets the job done. Even though Colorado State, I guess, could sneak up on them, I didn't think they're going to let that happen. I'm picking Tennessee. Then we have Loyola Chicago against Villanova, and again, there should always be some sort of Cinderella, Cinderella team in the NCAA March Madness tournament, and could it be them again? It could, but I don't think Lightning is going to strike twice on them. I'm picking Villanova to beat Lyo Chicago. Then we have Kansas going up against San Diego State, and again, if you were to pick a sort of Cinderella uh, sort of matchup, a one beating an eight, this is also a very close one. I think any one of the eights that come out of their matchup can beat the number one in each one of their divisions, so make sure to look out for those if you are sort of uh, making a second bracket, making an upset bracket. 
Johnson. Oh man, this is such a on a whim pick. I literally don't know, don't care. I might just go with an upset because I haven't been picking a whole lot of those. So let's pick LSU. I don't know why. I'm just doing it. Then we have Miami against Auburn, picking Auburn. Sweet 16 now. We have Gonzaga, UConn, picking Gonzaga. I feel like UConn might not even be coming this far in the tournament. I have no idea. But I feel like the further Gonzaga goes, the easier their matchups will get. I feel like going up against that 8-9 matchup, wherever it comes out of there, will be their toughest matchup until they get a little bit further into the March Madness run. I'm picking Gonzaga to come out on that one. We have TTU and Duke. And again, the further Duke goes into their matchups, are just going to get tougher and tougher and tougher for them because teams are going to get more and more locked in. We saw against UNC, it's tough for, for them to get it going when it, when times are rough and can a freshman team and a freshman in Palo Bancaro really lead this team? I don't think so. I'm thinking TTU to upset Duke, even though Duke could make it out of there. I don't think they will. I think they'll, they'll crumble under all that pressure, especially with Coach K and their last NCAA tournament run. That's a lot of pressure, so I think they're, they're going to lose to TTU. Then we have Baylor, UCLA. I'm actually going to pick the one upset. I'm picking for UCLA. They almost gave it to the one of the best teams in college basketball in Arizona. I feel like if they lock in like that against Baylor and actually get the job done like they could against Arizona, they can pull out the offset. I'm picking a 1-4 upset. UCLA losing, uh, sorry, beating the number one seeded Baylor team. Then we have Purdue and Kentucky. Oh, this is so tough. Kentucky is a great team. Providence, a very great scoring guard in Jaden Ivey. If he can go off this game, they can get the, the, the job done, basically. But Kentucky, having very good guard play this year, I feel they're going to lock down Jaden Ivey. The rest of, uh, of, of Purdue really going to struggle. I'm picking Kentucky. Then we have Arizona against Illinois. Again, I'm not even sure if Illinois is going to make it this far. I have actually have no idea who's going to make it out of there to face off against Arizona. But I feel like Arizona is very favorable against anyone who sort of comes out of that sort of sweet 16 area. So I'm picking Arizona to come out on there to go, to go to the Elite Eight. Then we have Tennessee, Villanova. This is a toss-up game. This is a game I actually have literally no idea who could come out on this one. I'm going to pick Tennessee. I know Villanova doesn't really have a whole lot of names on their team. I haven't really even been hearing about Villanova a whole lot this year watching, you know, a handful of college basketball games. I'm going to pick Tennessee. I've just heard about them a little bit more. Tennessee, a little bit more of a defensive-minded team, blocking more shots, uh, scoring more points in the paint, offensive rebounding as well, points off turnovers, a little bit more of a scrappier team, at least from what the stats say. Um, so I'm going to pick Tennessee. Then we have Kansas going up against Iowa. Again, like I talked about, Kansas not really being a true number one. I'm picking an upset of the 5-1. I'm picking Iowa. As you can see, as you can see I'm picking Iowa in a lot of matchups. I really feel like they're having a lot of pace of play. I really like the way they're playing. I love how Keegan Murray is being utilized in their offense. I'm, I'm picking Iowa to come up with an upset up there. And then we have LSU and Alabama. I mean, sorry, Auburn, not Alabama. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking Auburn, Jabari Smith Jr. That team is super talented. I think they're making their way pretty much pretty easily to the, to the Elite Eight. All right, Elite Eight, we have Gonzaga, TTU. Again, defense is really going to have to be the sort of case for TTU to beat and upset Gonzaga here. I don't think it's going to happen. I think Gonzaga, again, high IQ. They're going to have a great game plan here. Hopefully, they can get the job done. Hopefully, Chet Omkin can really show himself in this sort of uh, instantly March Madness tournament run. Because, again, like I said, he's probably the number one overall pick in this year's upcoming draft. I'm picking Chet Omkin and the Gonzaga Bulldogs to the Final Four. We have UCLA and uh, Kentucky. Oh, man. I think I'm going to pick... Uh, UCLA, Kentucky. Like, I think it's so hard to go up against a blue blood school like Kentucky who faced some of the toughest opponents in, in, in the entire uh, college basketball. And I'm going to pick Kentucky to win. I know it's a 1-2 matchup, but like again, uh, they have such good guard play. If they can really lock it in, really have a good pace of play, they could probably outrun UCLA. UCLA, a great team, though. I feel like this could be another upset here, but picking the safer option, I guess you could say for the video's sake, I'm going to pick Kentucky. And then this is actually a very tough matchup for Arizona, the 1-3 matchup against Tennessee. This can also be very much a, a toss-up game. I'm going to go a little bit with the depth of Arizona having uh, a bunch of really solid players and, and multiple, probably, first-round picks in um, Matherson and also Coloco, who I think is their big man down in the paint. Two very solid players. I think they also have 
uh, the sixth man of the Pac-12 on their team as well. Very good coaching. This will be a very close game, though. Very fun as well. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick Arizona. Then we have Iowa going up against Auburn. We have Keegan Murray going up against Jabari Smith Jr. Two power forwards are going to be sort of battling it out for the best power forward or maybe even one of the top picks in the upcoming NBA draft. You know what? I'm going to pick the upset. <laughs> I haven't picked a lot of upsets coming into the Final Four. So for the Final Four, we have a five making it all the way. That doesn't seem too crazy, at least my own opinion, even if I am trying to make a safer bracket. And this is definitely a safer bracket, so keep that in mind. We have Gonzaga going against Kentucky. I feel like Gonzaga having a little bit more of a size in big men sort of presence off with Jenna Holmgren and a couple of their other players. I think that size is going to out sort of uh, work Kentucky, even though Kentucky, great guard play, could shut it down for them. I'm picking the Gonzaga Bulldogs. And again, a very close matchup of Arizona and Iowa. Going to be very interesting to see how this works. But I think the size of Arizona, again, is going to really hurt uh, Iowa. Even Keegan Murray, I've been talking about him a lot. Only about a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, power forward. Not a whole lot of size there. I feel like Arizona will somehow find a way, have a very good game plan. I'm picking two number ones to go up against each other in the NCAA March Madness Tournament Championship game. Gonzaga, Arizona. I know, like I said, a very safe bracket, but hey, it's, it's my own video. I can make it how I want to, and this is a safer one. And yeah, championship game, New Orleans, Gonzaga, Arizona. Again, a toss-up. But again, when the push comes to shove, uh, there's always that, that meme of Gonzaga always being a team that, you know, doesn't really have a great sort of play and the, the, who they play in the regular season of their run in, in college basketball isn't even up to the par of the Pac-12 of, of Arizona, which isn't even that great of a conference, but it's a better conference. There's better opponents. And also because Arizona is actually my favorite college basketball team. Haven't won a national championship since 1997, which is the year I was born. I feel like it's good luck here. I say to get the job done, I'm going to pick Arizona as my tournament champions. So when it comes to a score, um, I think it's going to be a pretty mid to high scoring game. So I'm going to say like 88 to 86 Arizona. I'm going to say that's my final bracket. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Also, again, to be entered in sort of the, the competition, make sure you guys comment down below who you think is going to win. Again, maybe pick a little bit of an outside-of-the-box pick. Maybe we'll be helping out your chance of winning uh, the, the cash giveaway prize, whatever you want to say. You also have to like the video. You also have to be subscribed to the channel. And, yeah, I think that's everything. Sorry, this video was super rough, but there's a lot to talk about. Again, if you want a more in-depth look on some players or teams, I might be doing that in an upcoming video anyway, so hopefully you guys check out for that one. And yeah, I think that's everything. Hopefully this video was somewhat relaxing and somewhat entertaining. And yeah, I think that's everything. So I will be seeing you again in my next video very, 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 very soon. I love you guys, and I'll see you then.